Hey everyone, welcome to day four of our Armor of God study. Today's topic, bait selection, and we'll get to that in a minute. But for now, let's go ahead and review the last three days and what we talked about. Number one, we learned that every single human has an enemy. That enemy's sole purpose is to destroy you and to destroy me. And that enemy is scheming all around, watching you just so that it can figure out how to destroy you. Day number two, we unmasked that enemy and we learned that it is Satan, a fallen angel from heaven whose sole purpose and desire is to get back at God by getting you. That's the sole purpose, to get you, to destroy you, to render you completely useless so you can do nothing for God. That is the enemy that I'm talking about. Not talking about a person, not talking about the fact that you didn't get an Xbox, not talking about any of that stuff, talking about the real enemy of our souls. On day number three, we talked about being alert, being awake, not being lazy. Because if we know all of the things from day number one and number two, we have to understand that the enemy is not just sitting around. The enemy is waiting to get you. And we have to wake up to that reality. And then we have to figure out what do we do to arm ourselves? What do we do? How can we be and stay alert? That's where we get to day number four. So here we go. Bait selection. Do you know that the enemy, the devil, Satan, that he has been watching you from the moment you were born. Did you know that? And guess what? He has been, since you were a baby, since you were in those terrible twos, throwing out bait at you to see what bait, what temptation you are going to yield to. He has been watching how well you obey your parents. He has been watching if you are strong-willed and you want your own way and you'll fight for it. He has been watching and scheming and thinking of ways to get you to fall ever since you were a little child. Now that you're a teenager, now that you're a grown adult, the devil has specific strategies and tactics in order to try to get you to fall. Did you know that? Well, here are some of them. Let me just go through some of them for you. Some of the strategies that the devil uses are against your passions. He seeks to dim your whole desire for prayer. Hmm, are there times when you wake up and you just don't feel like praying today? Oh, I'm so tired. I just, uh, I'm just gonna start my day without prayer. Tactic number one, we, know, we don't have strength for the day to get through the day. We don't have God's power because we didn't pray. Strategy number two, against your focus. He disguises himself and manipulates your perspective so you end up focusing on the wrong culprit. Man, my friend, boy, she, blah, 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 blah. Man, my mommy, I can't stand her, blah, 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 blah. All those things that you're thinking right now in your head are distractions from what the real enemy is trying to do to you. We get so focused on the things around us that we forget that all of this stuff is against us and stuff that the enemy is using to make you weak. Strategy number three, against your identity. He magnifies your insecurities. Do you have some insecurities? Do you have some things that you struggle with? Leading you to doubt what God says about you and to disregard what God has given to you. Hmm. Strategy number four, against your family. He wants to divide your home, rendering it chaotic, restless, and unfruitful. Do you have homes like that? If you do, it's not the people that are in the situation. It's the enemy who has created this scenario specifically so you can focus on that and not on praying for a solution and praying for change. Strategy number five, against your confidence. He constantly reminds you of your past mistakes and your bad choices, hoping to convince you that you're under God's judgment rather than under the blood. Hmm. So if you've sinned in your past, if you have things that keep coming up over and over and over and you've already repented of those sins, guess what? The thoughts of them may not go away because the enemy will keep bringing them up and reminding you that you're horrible and look what you did. But guess what? 
If you've asked Jesus to forgive you, you don't need to worry about that because those things are covered by the blood and your confidence can be restored in knowing that I'm a child of God and I'm gonna go from here on out for Christ. Strategy number six, it's against your calling. He amplifies fear, worry, and anxiety until they're the loudest voices in your head, causing you to deem the adventure of following God too risky to attempt. Maybe God's called you to sing. Maybe God's called you to preach, to speak. Maybe God's called you for countless amount of things, to witness to your friends, to post things on social media about Christ, but he causes fear. He inflicts this fear in us against what God has called you to do. Strategy number seven, against your purity. He tries to tempt you towards certain sins, convincing you that you can tolerate them without risking consequences. Yeah, you can do it. Don't worry, there'll be no consequences. Knowing that they'll only wedge distance between you and God. See, when we decide to not be pure, when we decide to go and do our own thing, the problem is, is that that separates us from God. Strategy number eight, against your rest and your contentment. He hopes to overload your life and schedule and pressure you to constantly push beyond your limits, never feeling permission to say no to things. Strategy number nine, against your heart. He uses every opportunity to keep old wounds fresh in your mind. Knowing that anger and hurt and bitterness and unforgiveness will continue to roll the damage forward. So we, we struggle with unforgiveness. We just don't want to forgive what that person did. They're horrible. Ugh, I just want to get it right. And that is, that is a huge tactic because if the devil can keep you bitter and keep you angry, you have an unforgiven heart. And that's a strategy that can be used against you. Number nine, strategy number 10 against your relationships. And this is a big one because we're human and we have friends and we have all these people. He creates disruption and disunity within your circle of friends and within the shared community of the body of Christ or the church or the people that you see at youth group so that we can be distracted and so we're not paying attention. All of those things are things that separate us and that the enemy uses to cover our eyes about the real enemy, principalities and powers and rulers in dark places. These are the strategies that the enemy uses against you. Now, I've given you some stuff to think about, haven't I? I hope that you will now go back and think about your life, think about the times that you were tempted, think about the fact that maybe you were tired or maybe you were fighting with your parents or maybe countless amounts of things could have happened to cause you to fall to that particular temptation. But think about it this way. The enemy knew that because he was watching you and he knew that you would have probably ended up falling to that because that was the right bait at that particular time for you. Some of you might be afraid. Oh my word, he's been watching me my whole life. What do I do? Well, you don't have to be afraid. You know why? Because our God, the God who created us, created specific strategies for us to defeat the devil. And we're gonna be learning about those in the weeks to come. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for every single person that is listening to this under the sound of my voice. Lord, I pray right now that if maybe there's some people who don't understand or are confused, that you would open up a way for they, them to understand exactly what we're talking about. I pray if this, there is fear that you would calm them right now to understand that we are more than conquerors and we are victorious because you have put things in place for us to be able to resist the devil. I pray right now as this series goes on for each and every person to be able to learn from this study and to uh, adapt and adopt all of the things that we're about to teach in order to help us be successful in this race towards uh, knowing you and towards winning this battle. Thank you God for all you do. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you.